Hey guys, this is Blender Master here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to show you how to create this image of a sound wave inside a blender. So first thing we're going to do is create the color gradient that we'll be using to color our sound waves, as you can see over here. And to do that, I'm just going to delete this cube and lamp first, go to top view, orthographic view, and while selecting this camera, I'm going to press Alt-G and Alt-R to clear its location and rotation and press GZ10 to move it up on the z-axis by 10 units. And I'll go into camera view and press shift A to add a mesh plane and I'll tab into edit mode and just scale it up until the top edge is out of the view of the camera right there. And I'll do the same with these two sides by pressing SX. And then I'll just add a few loop cuts here about five loop cuts is good and this is going to separate our plane into six different faces and each face we're going to give a different color I'm going to use the colors of the rainbows but you can use any color that you want I'm just going to give this a solid color and make it shadeless and assign it to each of the faces so I'll do red orange and you have to make sure that you assign each face its material otherwise it won't have the right color and after this we'll be creating the sound wave by using a plane with a bunch of array modifiers so I'm almost done and last one I'll make it a pink color so okay so I think that's good I'll just tab out edit mode and render this image and that's it for our color gradient I'll just name the scene gradient or gradient and now I'll add a new scene and this is going to be our sound wave so what we're going to do here is add a plane I'll rotate this on the x-axis by 90 degrees and go to front view and orthographic then I'll tab into edit mode and scale this on the x-axis by 0.025 and then I'll press G, Z, and 1 so that way we can move this plane up and have the origin at the bottom of our plane. Now I'm going to add a loop cut and I'll move it up to about here and select the two top vertices and press R or W merge at center. Now what I'm going to do is add our modifiers. We're going to use an array modifier, a mirror modifier, and a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to set the subdivision surface modifier to 2. I'm going to switch the mirror modifier from X to Y and click clipping. And on the array modifier, I'm going to type in 1.025 for the relative offset. And that's looking good. Now I'll just change the count to 200. And then I'm going to duplicate this and move it to another layer just in case we mess up so that we have a backup and don't have to start over again. Now I'm going to apply this array modifier only, tab into edit mode, and go to wireframe view and select the bottom row of vertices and the one right after that by pressing B and clicking and dragging with my left mouse button. Then I'll press H to hide it. Now what we're going to do is create some random variation and to do that I'm just going to come over to here where it says select and click on random. Then I'll press G and Z and move it up and I'll keep on doing this each time clicking random again to get a different selection of vertices. And you can do this however many times you want until you feel like you have a result that you like. So I'll do this a couple more times, and that's good. 
Now I'm just going to unselect everything and press Alt H. And you can see that this row of vertices up here is above the highest vertice, and that's going to create some artifacts which we don't want. So to fix that, I'll just press Scale, S for Scale, and then Z to lock it on the Z axis. And I'm just going to scale in until it's below the lowest vertice, like that. And that's good. So now I'm just going to add another array modifier and move this to the top of everything again. And I'm going to make the count 1 just so I can see where it's being added. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to change it to 2 so we can see the gap. And right now there's no gap because it's exactly one unit uh, over. So I'm going to switch that to 1.025. That's too big. So 1.0025 maybe. 1.0002. And still bigger, so 1.0015. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but that's fine. And then I'll just add another count, so it's at 3. And I'll duplicate this again and move it to a different layer. And I'll apply the array modifier. Now, what we're going to do is create some motion sort of effect by using the proportional editing tool. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to select these bottom vertices again just so we can hide them and we don't edit them by mistake. I'm going to go into wireframe view to make sure they're all selected otherwise we might not get them all selected. Press H to hide and now I'll I'll just select one of these vertices, press O to bring up proportional editing, and then G and Z to bring it up. And you can scroll the middle mouse button to edit your field that's affected, field of influence. And here you can let your creativity run wild, do whatever you want to get the desired effect. I'm just randomly moving vertices like this. And you can just do really whatever you want. Get some really nice big ones, some smaller ones, skinnier. And it doesn't matter because the end result will look good no matter what you do here. So I'm just going to lift this one up too. That's looking good. Here I think it's a little too big, so I'm going to move it down like that. Or I'll undo that and bring everything down like that. And then I'm going to zoom or scroll in and bring it up like that. So that's good. And now I'll add my camera. I'll press Control Alt 0 to snap it to view. And then just position it so that it's has the sound wave in the center of the camera and everything's in the view. I'll just zoom in some more. And that's good, I believe. And I'm just going to change this clipping here to a thousand just to make sure that nothing gets cut off. And so that's looking good. Now I'm just going to switch over to Cycles Render and give this sound wave an emission material that's pure white. I'm going to change the background color to black. And if you render it, you'll see our image of a sound wave. I'm just going to tab into edit mode and unhide all the other vertices. And you can see that some of these vertices are still uh, below the second line so I'm gonna scale it on the I'm gonna turn off proportional editing and scale it on the Z axis again until it's small like that this one vertice there I'm gonna uncheck clipping really quickly and move that back up to where it was like that and I'll just render it out 
that's looking good so I'll just increase the samples to about a hundred and switch this and after this is done we'll go to the compositor really quickly and combine the images to get the final result so I'll press control left click to go to the compositor and make sure you're in the scene with the gradient I'll check use nodes and backdrop and control up arrow to make it full screen then I'm just going to press control shift and left click to bring up the viewer node and right now you just have to render the image to see it because it wasn't rendered and I'm going to duplicate this node here and switch the scene to sound wave and now we'll do the magic so I'll press Shift A, Filter, and Blur to blur out this gradient. And I'm going to switch it to Fast Gaussian, Relative, Y, 5 by 5. Then I'm going to add a Mix node, Shift A, Color Mix, switch it to Multiply, and combine it with the color gradient. And you can start to see the effect coming together. Now what we want to do is add an RGB curve and plug in the sound wave into it and what we're going to do with this is create some highlights by making it more contrasted so I'm just going to bring this line down like that so we get a nice darker image I'll duplicate this multiply node switch it to add and combine the two images together that's looking good. I'll just bring it to the side a little bit more and down. I think that's good. And so now I'll just duplicate this blur node. I'm going to plug in the sound wave picture into it. And I'm going to change the X to 0 and the Y to 10. And then I'll duplicate the multiply node, combine it with the color gradient. and duplicate the add node and add these two together and that's our final image but I think that blur is too strong I'll switch it back to five and yeah that looks pretty good uh, if you wanted you could tweak this contrast here because right there it looks a little too much but it's up to you really you can do whatever you want with this and have fun with it really so I'm just gonna play with that there and here you can see that it's a sharp transition and if you want to change that you can uh, duplicate this blur node and put it right in between there and switch it from 5 to 1 or maybe something more like two and that looks a lot better so that's pretty much it now you just have to plug in the last node into the composite and render the entire thing out and there, there you have it that's the final image on how to create sound waves inside a blender I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please share your results in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave a comment as well. Thanks for watching.